Welcome to another message from the book of Philippians. We're studying God's word from the original languages here, Greek reading and research from Philippians. And it's been a couple of weeks or so uh, since we did a, a message from the book of Philippians. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to go catch up to where we are reading from the Amplified Bible in the second chapter. Let's start with about verse number 10. That in at the same name of Jesus every every knee should bow in heaven upon the earth and under the earth. And every tongue frankly and openly confess and acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my dear ones, as you have always obeyed my suggestions, so now, not only with the enthusiasm you would show in my presence, but much more because I am absent, work out and cultivate and carry out to the goal and fully complete your own salvation with reverence and all and trembling and self-distrust, that is, with serious caution, tenderness and conscience, and watchfulness against temptation, timidly shrinking from whatever might offend God and discredit the name of Christ. Not in your own strength, for it is God who is all the whole while effectually at work in you, energizing and creating in you the power and desire both to will and to work for his good pleasure and satisfaction and delight. Do all things without grumbling and fault finding and complaining against God and questioning and doubting among yourselves that you might show yourselves to be blameless and guileless and innocent and uncontaminated children of God without blemish, faultless and unrebukable in the midst of a crooked and a wicked generation, spiritually perverted and perverse among whom you are all seen as bright lights, stars or beacons shining out clearly in the world, in the dark world, holding out to it and offering to all men the word of life, so that in the day of Christ I may be, I may have something of which exultatedly to rejoice and, and glory in that I did not turn my run my race in vain or spend my labor in no purpose. My beatings were not in vain, he said. And boy, Paul had a lot of beatings, didn't he? His beatings were not in vain. And even if my life's blood, my own blood, must be poured out as a libation on the sacrificial offering of your faith to God, still I am glad to do it and congratulate you all on your share in it. And then we come down to the verse where we are. And you also in like manner be glad and congratulate me on my share in that very thing thing. And here we will go. Verse number 18. <clears throat> now, the title of this message is Self-Sacrifice and the, si and the Sacrifice of Christ. Sacrifice. It is sacrifice, service, and faith. Our life is sacrifice, service, and faith. Now, many of God's people don't put their money where the mouth is, do they? They praise God. They, they do all kinds of things. I once met a, 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 I knew a preacher, preacher, another minister, very, very close. And he would come and talk with me. And uh, in all reality, that man had a whole lot better life than I had. I was in dire straits at that time. Because I had a real, some real family problems that I couldn't take, that I couldn't cure. It was impossible. Anyway, he came to me and he was talking to me, and he, and uh, we were both uh, 
uh, going to pastor churches. He was going to pastor church, I was going to pastor church. And he started talking to me about his wife and different things like that. And, and, uh, and that how that one day that he was really going to serve the Lord when he got to be a pastor of a church. That right now that he didn't tithe and, uh, and he didn't go to church every service and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, uh, he, had a, he had some problems. My problems were much worse than his. He just didn't know what they were because I didn't tell him. But I said, you mean, uh, brother, you don't tithe? And he said, no. He said, I will when I become a pastor. I'll tithe. And I said, well, I said, brother, you ought to tithe now. Because I said, how can you tell your church members that they ought to tithe if you don't tithe when you're a church member? Well, he said, I know I'll be an example then, so I'll do it. And uh, now that's a very hard thing in this world because people don't want to part with their money. You know that? They have a hard time parting with the money. But Paul here is telling these people, put your blood where your money went. Seal your commitment with Christ with your blood as I have. And if I have to shed every bit of my lifeblood, if my body is decapitated and I am murdered for the cause of Christ, so be it. And you ought to be also willing to not only give of your finances and your worldly wealth, but also of your life. Now today, <clears throat> in Afghanistan right now, there are children of God over there that are giving their life. Giving their life. We had a, a great disaster there. We pulled out of Afghanistan before the civilians could get out. That's real stupid, people. Real stupid. Real careless. Real negligent. We got thousands of people there that are civilians in Afghanistan that are they're losing their lives. And the Apostle Paul, now they are living a life like Paul lived then. Mm -hmm. They will have to sign their love for God in their blood. Especially if we don't do something about it. It's going to happen. It may come all the way here because being a Christian today is not a, a real... Uh, what we might call a presentable thing in the world that we live in today. Paul is telling these people here, I'm probably going to have to give my life, my blood. You be willing to do the same thing that I do. This thing right now, I know Sharon has thought, it just really bothers her. She watches the, the news over there. And she sees these people, I, 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 and she sees all these thousands of people fleeing. Some people will grab on the side of an airplane and hold on to the airplane because they know they're going to die. And then they fall off and die. I guess they chose to die that way rather than dying by the hands of these Muslims. Well, they could be tortured to death. They could have her be burned to death. Anything. They do it all. They could be crucified. They do all of these things. Sometimes, and someday, maybe we'll be called upon to shed our blood and put our, our blood where our mouth is mm -hmm. and where our money is. And some, some people won't even give their, their wealth to the Lord, let alone their life, their blood. These people over there have lost all the material goods in the world. I hope you don't mind me using you for an example, Sharon, but uh, you were telling me the other day that when your family had to flee Egypt and uh, back when they were having a civil war over there and they were trying to kill all the Americans and, and she was on this bus and a little uh, seven-year-old girl and they were rocking the bus trying to turn the bus over because they were going to kill all the Americans on board. They were trying to seek them out and to kill them. They were trying to get out of there with their lives. 
her mother and her sister and her father were all separated, or her father was separated from them. They finally got on the ship and started across the Mediterranean to get out of that mess, never knowing one minute from one minute to the next where you're going to live or die. Sharon knows what they feel like over there right now. I was over there from December 1975 to May of 1976, and I know what it is like to be shot at. And I know what it is like being living in danger, whether you never know you're going to live one minute or five minutes or whether you're going to live a year. You don't know. We're in war. Back here, at this period of time, the Christian world was at war with the rest of the, with the Roman world and with the Judaistic world. Paul the Apostle had been an all-out uh, member of Judaism at one time. He gave his all. He lived and breathed Judaism. But when he was converted, he lived and breathed Jesus Christ. Now he's telling them <clears throat> Paul had been stoned to death already. He had been beaten, he had been arrested, he had been jailed, he had been starved, he had been tortured. And he says, I hope that you will do likewise if it's called upon you. One of my dear friends wrote a little story the other day that part of her family was over in Afghanistan, that they had been missionaries over there for several years, and they were trying to find them to kill them now. They were hiding out. They were running from village to village to try to stay alive. And I wrote back to her and I said, they are living the apostles' lives. They are living like the apostles did. A great honor to those people. And great shame sometimes to us. And Paul here is telling them, you don't know what's going to happen to you now. I hope you follow in my footsteps. 218 To De Alto Kai Himes Karete Kai Sig Karete Mui. Moreover, also in the same way, I want you to rejoice. You all rejoice. And you rejoice with me. Now that you put your money where your mouth is, put your life where, put your blood where your life is. Verse number 19 says, El piso de en kirio esu temotheon toxios pamps a himen hina cago you seke, sub seco that is, nos ta peri himon. Moreover, I hope, I continue to hope in the Lord Jesus Christ, or in the Lord Jesus. The word, remember that word, curio now, that is the word for Jehovah. Hope in Jehovah the same Jesus. Timotheon, shortly, to send to you. I'm going to send, uh, I hope to send Timothy shortly to you. In order that I also may be of good cheer, having known the things concerning you. He said he's going to report back to me now. He said I'm going to send Timothy to you, shortly. This word Timothy there means to be uh, honorable to God. It means uh, to uh, it means to be precious, valuable, valent, of great honor. He said, "I'm going to try to send to him shortly." Now Timothy was a, a resident of Lystra. Lystra. His father was Greek, his mother was Jew. It speaks of him in Acts 16 and 1, Acts 17, 4, and 23 and verse 5. He said, I want to send him to you. 
in order that I saw, so will so be, uh, now this word euxake, euxake, that means of the same soul. It means uh, of, of my soul will be happy. And my soul will be happy with you, and we're of the same soul, and the same spirit, and the same mind. Having no things concerning you. Verse number 20 now. And I want to go back and read this after we do a couple more verses. Uthania, gar, echo, isocone, hostess, nosios, ta, peri, himon, meri, menene, say. He said, for no one I have... Uh, Equal soul with. I saw seek home. I saw seek home. This is where we get our word soul from that word there. Psyche. This is where you get the word psychology. He said, For I don't know of anyone else who has the like soul, the like mind, the like energy as Timothy, who is genuinely. And then this word nocios there, that means a, a legitimate birth. Paul looked upon Timothy as his own legitimate son. His legitimate son. Of his, his, his own son. Who, genuinely, genuinely and sincerely, and this is a little adverb that is only used here one time in the New Testament. He said this bird, this is not an illegitimate birth. Timothy is my genuine son, and you are my genuine children. You're a legitimate birth. Concerning the things of you, I shall keep in mind, and I shall care for. Let's go back and read these two verses here in the Amplified Bible. For you also, in like manner, be glad and congratulate me on my share in it. That's in shedding his blood. But I hope and trust in the Lord Jesus soon to send Timothy to you, so that I may also be encouraged and cheered by learning news from and of you. Verse number 20 says, For I have no one like him, no one so such in like soul, same soul, of kindred spirit, who shall be so genuinely interested in your welfare and devoted to your special interest. Verse number 21 now. Hoi, pontes, gar, ta, hiaton. Zetusa. Uta Esu Christu. Now Luke is not here with Paul now. Luke is away from here, away from Rome at this time. And Paul is uh, is relating some things to these people from his very soul. He said, "The ones for all the ones and the things of themselves they seek." not Jesus Christ. He said, so, so many people have come and gone in my ministry, but Timothy has stayed with me all the way, and so have you. He said, you are not uh, uh, sunshine friends, but you're rainy, rainy day friends also. Have you ever had people that love to have a good time and they were around you, as long as you could uh, uh, have a party? A party people, I'm a really good having a good time, party time. But when they come out to go out there and uh, and and hit the sweat and blood and tears, they were nowhere to be found. Verse number twenty-two, Tain de dokimain, alto genos kete. Hoti hos patri. Technon sin 
Emoy, Edu Lucen, Ace To Yoang Leon. And it says here, but the test of metals, the very uh, touchstone of uh, the very testing of personalities, the very testing of souls, that word dokimane there, that means to test by fire, to test by a touchstone, whatever, to find out what a metal is made out of. He said, Paul says here, one of these days you're going to find out what I'm made out of, what Timothy's made out of, and what you're made out of. The truth will come out 100% one of these days. And when the real persecution comes, this is when we're going to find out what you're made out of. I so grieve for those people in Afghanistan today, the Christians. Such a thoughtless, careless acts as are taking place to throw them in harm's way and nearly a sentence of death. But the testing of him, you continue to know because as a father, a child with me he served unto the gospel. Let's go back and read these two verses here. For all others all seek to advance their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ the Messiah. But Timothy's tested worth, you know. This man has been tested and tried. He'd been through the fire. How as a son with his father he has toiled with me, serious, zealously serving and helping to advance the good news and the gospel. Look back at this word here now. Look at some words here in this verse. The testing. You know what his character is. And he said, you continue to know. Because as a father... And now we have the word apatri there, but we have the word technon. And the technon is like equivalent to the Hebrew yalad. And yalad and technon mean what? A live, valid birth. A validated birth. That he is my, I am his father, and he is my valid son. With me, he has served. He has slaved. All for ace to yuan de leon. Now the word ace there is the extension or limitation of thought or reverberant action. That's the idea of this of this preposition here, page 119 in the analytical Greek lexicon. The extension or limitation of thought or verbal action, this accusative case, this case of action. He said all of his whole life and his interests like mine have been for the furtherance of the gospel. Let's look at this word, little word here on the blackboard, the whiteboard for a moment. Word ace. The Hebrew equivalent is et. Now, ace here, the idea is action. Is action. The idea is extreme action now. Let's look over here. Here's an object right here. Now, there are a lot of Hebrew prepos or Greek prepositions. One of them is pros. Alright, pros means up to it, toward it. Alright, and then we have hyper, hyper. That means over it. Okay, and hypo means under it. And in means in it. All right? And peri means around it. And ace means all of it. His whole life, his whole focus has been ace to yongaleon for the message, the good news of God. That's what Prompt Timothy lives is. Verse number 23, and this is our last verse now, 
for this message. Two tone man un el piso. Pampse hos on afido ta peri in me ex altes. <clears throat> for indeed this, therefore, I hope to send. And then we have a hose on a fido, as if I may see. Now Paul doesn't really know whether he's going to be alive today or tomorrow or the next day. Nor does he know how Timothy is going to fare, whether he's going to live or not. Timothy was sick. He was sick. Another one of his companions was sick unto death. Now, by the way, if they were sick, if Paul was sick, if Paul didn't heal himself, if Paul didn't heal Timothy, if Paul didn't heal his other companions when they were sick unto death, why didn't he do that if he had the power to heal people? Because these people believed. Healing and miracles were for the unbelievers, not for believers. People remember that. The healing and miracles were for unbelievers, not for believers. Paul sought the Lord to heal him, but he didn't do it. And so he was satisfied with that. Now he uses uh, some terms here. We have a little, uh, an adverb there, host. Uh, you can look that out on page 444. And then on, that is the fourth class conditional. And Davis's grammar on page 214. And then we have this uh, word here that governs that little conditional particle. And that conditional particle means that the, the fourth kind of condition is a condition is undetermined, but with a prospect or remote prospect of determination. This is what I hope to do. A fido. First person singular, second heiress, subjunctive active. That subjunctive mode rules that particle right there. And I may see the things concerning me immediately, at once, at this very moment. Now let's go back and read these last two verses. But Timothy tested, tested worth, you know, how as a very son with his father, a live birth, a valid son of mine, he has toiled with me zealously serving and helping to advance the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ, for I hope, therefore, to send him promptly, just as soon as I know how my case is going to turn out. Paul doesn't know whether he's going to live or die another day. Roman emperors, they could call you on the carpet right now and have your head chopped off at, in their sight right now. You have to realize that in the world that they lived in, life and death meant nothing to people. Mm -hmm. Thousands of people died every day in the empire. In that Colosseum in Rome, thousands of people died. Many people died every day. Every time they had a funeral, they went out there and they had a whole bunch more funerals. They'd have a funeral, and by celebrating this funeral for this very important person, they would put gladiators in the circle in that Colosseum with wild boars, bear, lions, or other gladiators. And everybody's trying to stay alive. Marilyn wants me to preach a sermon looking over your shoulder. Then we're going to do that. These people had to be looking over their shoulder at all times. You go up here in the woods, and you look at a wild horse, and you look at a, a deer, and you look at a bighorn sheep or an animal, they're always looking, always looking, always listening, always looking over their shoulder. Because death is just around the corner. Every moment, death is just around the corner. Death is just around the corner to all of these people right here. Death is just around the corner. Now, we all die. We all get sick. 
We, all these things happen, but we're talking about intentional termination of life. And it could happen to Paul at any moment. It could happen to Timothy at any moment. It could happen to them at any moment. On the television, we watch things and they show about the gladiators and the deaths and the burials of the gladiators. Many of them were just taken out and thrown into the rivers. And they floated down to the ocean. And the fish ate them. Or the sharks or whatever. Birds. Pelicans. Seagulls. Vultures. And some of them were given honorable graves. Buried with their honors. Those were the exceptional ones. Those that that looked over their shoulder and were good enough athletes to stay alive. With bear, lions, wild boars, whatever. Bulls in that arena. Maybe some of you watched the movie Spartacus. A gladiator could win his freedom if he was exceptional. But he was still a gladiator. He still faced death all the time. And Paul is using his life to show you that we are all gladiators. We are all God's gladiators. We're all facing death. We're all looking over our shoulder every day. But may... God get the glory from all things. He said, I hope to send Timothy to you shortly as soon as I find out what's going to happen to me. Don't we live, at least us here, at this moment, at this time, don't we live in a very, very safe and secure world? When we look in China, India, Afghanistan, Iraq, Turkey, many of the places in the world where it is not friendly, Christian friendly. May we be thankful and may we always pray for those that don't have this secure security of tomorrow and a roof over their, or their head and food in their stomach. Think about those things, a roof over your head. Tomorrow we're going to put air conditioner in our home to make it more comfortable for us. That's really good. But when I grew up in that little one-room shack with a dirt floor and a tarp flap for a door and a little old chicken wire screen for a window, the flies were all of us all summer long. We burned up. I, just, I was thankful for the winter. We could put enough blankets on us to kind of stay warm. It got cold. It froze, you know. We didn't, have a, we didn't have a heater to stay on all night or anything like that. I'm thankful that in my old age, at least for this moment, that I can have some of these luxuries, but there's people all over the world that don't, and some of them are very old, and some of them are very ill. And I'm old and I'm ill. Paul said, I've learned to be thankful for whatever shape I'm in, whatever's around me, I'm happy with it. May we learn that. May we... we Maybe we learn to trust in God and to be happy with what we have and with the life and what life has given to us. Our Father, we send this message out, especially praying for those in the world that, that aren't secure, that aren't safe, that are in terrible danger and threat of life every moment. We pray for them. They are the apostles' lives in the world today. Father, I pray for them, and I pray that we may appreciate your grace that we have at this moment. Please forgive me where I failed you, and use this message for your honor and glory. In Jesus' name.